Well, hey there. Welcome to Wesley Church Online. I'd like to thank you so much for spending part of your Independence Day weekend with us. If you hear anything today, know that God loves you and so do we. My name is Elizabeth Chin and I'm so excited to be this year's Next Generation Ministries Cultivate Intern. For the next eight weeks, I will be shadowing Pastor James and learning more about what a pastor does. I am extremely thankful for this amazing opportunity. We are in a worship series called What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do, where we are uncovering which way to turn when we don't know, how to get out of the dark places, and how to respond when God is telling us something. Today, we are talking about how it is okay to not be okay. Many of us struggle with the difficult moments in our lives because we don't realize that it's okay to not be okay. Troubled times do come and they will. Before we jump into the worship, I'm sure right now you're thinking of someone you want to bring to church with you. We've made it easy. Just click the invite button or send them this link now. Wesley.online.church. That's Wesley.online.church. If you're new with us, make sure to fill out the I'm New Here card, and we would love to connect with you, get to know you, and pray for you this week. Let us begin with the call to worship. I'll read the light print, and you all read aloud the bold print. Let us rejoice in the God of our salvation, to whom we turn to in times of joy and times of sorrow. Let us not be afraid to be real and honest before God in the community of faith. Restore us, O Lord. Please join me in the opening prayer. God of understanding, we gather together today as people who go through ups and downs in life. We confess that in difficult times, we often close ourselves off to you and to one another. May we turn to you in our need, confident in your ability to handle all we bring to you. Help us to be a supportive community to one another so that we can accept the present as we step into a future filled with your hope. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Now, let's enter into a time of worship. Good to go. One, two, one, two. Good, the great, you free every captive. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, we lift these prayers of joys and concerns to you today, knowing that you want to hear that which is in our hearts. Thank you for your unconditional love and grace. Thank you for watching over each and every one of us every day. In a world of endless unknowns, we need you. Please continue to heal us, guide us, and care for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, Wesley Church, it's Lindsay. Hi, Wesley, good morning. We're doing the scripture reading this morning from the book of Ruth, the first chapter, verses 11 to 21. But Naomi said, turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they grow up? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept out loud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus, and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. So the two of them went, to, went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. The women said, Is this Naomi? She said to them, Call me no longer Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has dealt harshly with me, and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Another day. What should I do today? Should I get washed up? Should I take a shower? I'm waiting. Is God going to tell me what to do? Is there a direction for me to your clothes? How long should I wash my hands for? How do I even to answer this question? Is it even worth washing my hands like this? What should I eat for breakfast? Does God even care about me? This is good for me. Should I wait or should I make a decision? Where is God leading me right now? What is, where is God in all this? I wonder what where is God in all my struggles? Is God what do I do still there? there? I'm not should okay. Should I do something more? Is that okay? okay? I don't know what to do. What do I do when I don't know what to do? Hello there and happy Independence Day weekend. Uh, my name is James Lee, I'm the pastor here and it's good to be back. Uh, I just got back from two weeks of renewal leave and I want to take some time to thank our church leadership for giving me the space to take some time. Uh, my time away was really, really good. I got to spend some time with my family. Uh, I caught up with loved ones. I spent one day just doing nothing, which I didn't get to do in a very, very long time, which was nice. But most importantly for me, uh, I got to go to a cabin for three days all by myself. 
and spend some dedicated time just with the Lord, uh, meditating on the Word and listening to God's voice and His call upon my life and the vision He has for Wesley Church. And I must say, I am excited. I am excited to be back. Today, we are continuing where we left off two weeks ago in a sermon series titled, What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do. And I will be preaching on uh, the sermon titled, It's Okay Not to Be Okay. If you are struggling in any way today, then I encourage you to open your ears, uh, to lean in and allow God to speak into your soul through these words, because these words are for you. Can we pray before we begin? Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. My time of renewal reminded me of how much I love being a dad. I played hide and seek about 20 million times with my kids. Uh, Amy, my five-year-old, loves to draw, and we would draw together. Uh, Adam, my three-year-old, loves sword fights and soccer. Uh, even now, as I'm back to work, when I come home after a, long, uh, after a long day, I get right back into it, being the dragon monster that Amy the magician freezes with her ice magic, and then Adam the knight must slay uh, with a hard plastic sword that has left me with uh, some bruises, I'm not going to lie. And nine-month-old baby Renee is now crawling. Yes, she is now crawling. So she comes right on over to get a slice of the action, or at least to get a good seat to watch daddy get beat up by her siblings. Children are full of life, aren't they? Amy especially was always a fireball. I remember when Adam was still in the womb, little Amy would uh, climb trees she had no business climbing, a dart off at full speed in the middle of the mall. I may have lost her once or twice. And she would uh, dig through mommy's closet to wear her clothes. I shared this with some of you, but on February 15th, 2017, about an hour after I took that picture, two-year-old Amy uh, experienced a complex fibrosis seizure that wouldn't stop. On the ambulance, she was given heavy sedatives that failed to stop the seizure. And when we got into the hospital, a dozen doctors and nurses surrounded Amy, trying this and trying that to stop the convulsions, to stop the seizures. My wife, Julie, and I began looking at the clock and we noticed that more than an hour had passed since her seizure began. The reality that uh, we were going to lose our daughter began to set in. I remember thinking as we sat in the hospital, uh, helplessly as Amy's seizure would go on and on for more than three hours that evening. This might be the last photo of Amy alive. And my mind uh, turned to God and I was bitter. God, what has little Amy done to deserve this? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to us? Why are you making Julie, seven months pregnant with our unborn son, go through this? Why? God. Why? I was not okay. I wonder if you've ever felt that way in your life. Do you ever have moments when you look around and it seems like no matter where you look, things are going crazy and are out of control? Maybe you have trouble sleeping at night. You feel stuck at home. The loneliness becomes overwhelming. Uh, the Zoom fatigue sets in. Uh, I read in an article in the New York Times this week about how many folks have Zoom shirts, right? A business outfit hanging on your chair to throw on right before a Zoom meeting. Uh, when I read that, I felt very seen. Maybe the unpaid bills and rent are catching up with you. Watching the news or scrolling through social media drains you even more and makes you even more depressed. To quote the great theologian Ozzy Osbourne, it's like we're going off the rails on a crazy chain. We are not okay right now. I think that is how uh, Naomi felt in the opening scene of the book of Ruth. For this week and next week, we are going to look at this wonderful little book in the Bible of just four chapters. And I believe that if we play, uh, pay close attention to it, we'll find that there is hope for us today, even in the most confusing times. Specifically, today's reading teaches us three things when you are not okay, go to your community. Number two, when you are not okay, 
take it to God. And number three, when you're not okay, you are never alone. So let's dive right in. We begin uh, with Naomi, a Jewish woman married to Elimelech. Uh, they lived in Bethlehem with their two sons, uh, but a famine forced them to leave their home and go to a foreign country called Moab. And they were there for 10 years. Uh, her sons married Moabite women. Uh, but then one day her husband and her two sons die. And in those days, if a woman had no husband and had no sons, that meant she had nothing and had no means to financially survive. I mean, it is already an extremely traumatic event to lose your husband and your two sons while living in a foreign country. But then she has, on top of that, the complete destruction of her future, her financial stability, and her chance to live. I imagine her also saying, why God, why? So here we have Naomi, along with her two daughters-in-law, Orpah, and Ruth. Uh, verse 6 and 7 in today's reading says this, Then Naomi started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. When Naomi was not okay, she decides to go back to her hometown, back to her family, back to her community. She somehow knew deep inside that she doesn't have to go at this alone. Beloved, when you are not okay, you can go to your community. Maybe it's your spouse, your parents, your close friend, your church family. We are here for you. As we read on to the later verses, a note that as the town gathers around her, she is not chastised by the religious leaders or her loved ones for having negative feelings toward God. But rather, her community is quiet and listens and allows her to express the trauma in her heart because it's okay not to be okay. Verse 19 and 20 says this, when they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? She said to them, call me no longer Naomi, which means pleasant. Call me Mara, which means bitter, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. Bitter. You know, a name change is a powerful event in the Bible. Uh, Abram is renamed Abraham as he begins his covenant with God. Jacob is renamed Israel. Simon becomes Peter. It signifies a spiritual transformation. And I believe this name change uh, also has that kind of significance. This is an expression of the spiritual tension I feel with God. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. For God, I am bitter with you. Have you ever wanted to be called Mara? I know I have when my daughter was in the hospital fighting for her life. But note here that just as Naomi's community gives her space and just listens, so God is also remarkably silent. And you might possibly think, oh, God is just ignoring her, but a look at all the Bible, and especially the Psalms, draws a different picture. Psalm 13 says this, uh, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Psalm 10 says this, Why, O Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? Psalm 22, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning, Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Note that David was the man after God's own heart. Now, he wasn't perfect, but he had a very special connection with God and was always seeking to live a life that honored God. And these were the Psalms that he wrote when he was not okay. He wrote these songs this way because he knew that he can always take his anger his bitterness, his frustration to God and still be unconditionally loved. Beloved, when you're not okay, you can take it to God. 
because God can take it. Bring your difficulties and your traumas and your hurts and your bitterness to the table. Don't turn away from him, but go deeper. Cry out to God. Go deeper with God. God can take it. You know, that evening as two-year-old Amy was still seizing, I remember Julie and I were sitting by Amy's side and Julie took out her phone to turn on worship music. As the music played, the lyrics sung out, God is our healer. And Julie, in tears, blurted out to me, James, it's saying God is our healer. I'm so happy that God is our healer. Now, for a moment, I was dumbfounded. Here I was, angry at God that this was happening to me, being all self-pitying, but Julie was being enveloped by the presence of God in the midst of terrible sorrow as the words, God is our healer, filled the operating room. She brought her bitterness directly to God, and God did not leave her. When you're not okay, you can take it to God. And finally, when you're not okay, you are never alone. Really, Pastor James, never alone? How so? Well, let me show you. So uh, Ruth and Orpah are walking back to Bethlehem from Moab, and Naomi looks at her daughters-in-law and gives them some really sound advice. She is basically saying, uh, why would you want to follow a poor old woman back to a foreign country? Go home. Start over while you're still young. Orpah agrees and returns home, but Ruth looks at Naomi and says in verses 16 and 17 this way, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well, if even death parts me from you. Uh, in other words, Ruth is saying this, Naomi, I am completely committed to you. I am all in. What we see in Ruth is a common theme throughout the Bible. The example of God's promise to the world is best exemplified, not in the chosen people of Israel, but in the most unlikely person from a foreign country like Ruth. We see uh, back in the story of Joshua, when God works through the prostitute Rahab from Jericho. And now here, God works through a widow from Moab. The interesting thing is that both of these women are in the line of generations that leads to who? To Jesus. Jesus Christ, the one who is fully human and fully God, walked among us and lived the life we should have lived and died the death we should have died. He took all of your sins and mine and died on the cross, crying out his own suffering, his own bitterness and hurts to God, crying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He took, he took on all the not okayness of the universe so that ultimately, in the very end of it all, you and I would be okay to the fullest extent. He's saying to us through the very sacrifice of his own life on the cross, I am completely committed to you. I am all in. When you are not okay, you are never alone. Because just like Naomi had Ruth, so you and I have Jesus. And he's saying to you, I'm all in. Beloved, I invite you to ask yourself, have I ever let my bitterness drive me away from people or away from God? Have I ever truly told myself that it is okay not to be okay? That I can go to my community? I can go to God? I can know that I'm never alone in this? Do you believe it? Imagine a church that lives into this reality, one that is supportive and walks alongside one another regardless of where we're at. To build healthy ways of expressing our honest emotions to God to be a radically loving community that says collectively, just as Christ is all in for me, so I am all in for you. A community where it is okay to not be okay. And God's interlocking grace would carry us through. You know, I long for that. And I believe God is calling Wesley Church to be that today. I really believe that. Will you join me in prayer as we go to God to ask for this today? Let us pray. Almighty God, I give you thanks for your love and your grace 
Lord, for the cross and the empty tomb that reminds us of your amazing love, that you never leave us, that you are with us every step of the way. Lord, many of us today are not okay. Lord, you know the extent of our anxiety, our depression, our suffering, our not okayness. But Lord, we thank you for community, for family that we can connect to and rely on during this time. We thank you that you are with us and you can take it and we can come to you and worship you even in the comforts of our own homes, Lord. You are there and we can worship you. And Lord, we thank you that Jesus Christ is with us every step of the way and that we are never alone. God, as we come to the table now, I pray that you would reveal yourself to us just as you did to your disciples. At the moment the bread was broken, you revealed yourself. So Lord, as we come to the table to break bread, show us your way, show us your face, that we would be reminded and have confidence in your salvation, in your hope, and in your grace. Lord, many of us are not okay, but thanks be to God and thank you to you. It is okay to not be okay. We, because we are with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, I invite you all to bring your attention towards the communion elements you've prepared as we come to the table of grace. And may we too, as we eagerly wait for the day we can partake in this meal together in person, let these broken things uh, enhance our belief and draw us closer to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they war uh, learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. I invite you all now to extend your hands over the elements prepared before you as we bless them together. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, I invite you, if you are sitting with anyone uh, in the living room or maybe out in the barbecue, who knows, uh, to take the prepared piece of bread, to break a piece and to serve one another, saying, this is the body of Christ given for you. And to take the cup and to dip it in, saying, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Almighty God, I thank you for this meal, this opportunity to be reminded that it is okay to not be okay, that in our tension, in our fear, in our anxieties, in our uncertainties, Lord, you remind us of your grace by this table. Lord, how anxious you must have been, uncertain about the death that is be was before you as you partook in this meal. But Lord, in the end, you defeated death you saved us from sin, and Lord, rescued this world, liberating us into a new life. Lord, may this bread and wine be for us the body and blood of Christ, filling our veins with your, your power, with your DNA, with your love. Take us forth into the uncertain future, knowing that you are Lord, and that you are God, and that you are love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now is the time in our worship where we give our tithes and offerings. There are two ways you can give today. One way is to mail a check to our church at 1500 Plainfield Ave, South Plainfield, New Jersey, 07080. The other way is to give online at www.wumcsp.org slash give. If it's your first time giving online, know that it is safe it only takes one minute to set up, and afterwards, it'll only take a few seconds. On behalf of Wesley Church, I want to thank you for responding to God's call on your life to generosity. Your response to God's command to give allows us to keep doing what we're doing and to be God's hands and feet to our hurting community and world. Now, let us watch a video reflecting one of the ministries that your gifts empowers. Today, we are opening registration for Ignite Summer at Home. With Ignite Summer at Home, your online camper will connect with a great community of students, grow in faith, learn new skills, and have a lot of fun too. We will have two Ignite Summer at Home programs for middle and high school students. The first one is Inspire at Home. Online campers will explore different ways to make music, perform monologues, create photography projects, make crafts, and more creative arts. During Ignite Transform at Home, online campers will discover how to be faithful to Jesus' ministry of spreading the kingdom of God by learning about and challenging racist systems and practices. These Ignite Summer at Home programs will be available for four weeks in July. The duration of each program will be for one week, but we'd love for your students to join us multiple weeks too. Please visit the Next Generation Ministries website to learn more, register your student today, and share with students from your church and community. We look forward to connecting with you this summer. Here, moving in our midst, 
I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here. Touching every heart I worship you I worship you You are here Healing every heart I worship you I worship you You are here Turning life I worship you, I worship you, you are here, mending every heart, and I worship you, I worship you. Love
Thank you again for joining us for worship today. I hope it was a blessing to you and your family and whoever joined with you for worship today. And now receive the benediction. Go forth, children of the Most High God, recipients of the greatest love this world has ever known, in confidence, in courage, and in hope, sharing the good news of great joy that our Lord Jesus Christ is alive, that our Lord Jesus Christ loves us and gives us life to the full. Go forth, sharing that message of grace and hope in the name of the one who is our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Amen. Thank you again. I hope you have a blessed, blessed week. Uh, before you go, I want to briefly remind you all uh, that you would have received an email uh, about our regathering survey. You know, we are making plans eventually to get back to the building. Uh, you know, we are all talking about that with, with uh, COVID-19. When are we going to come back to the building? And we have a team that is working hard on planning that together. So we send out a survey and I strongly encourage you to fill that survey out as soon as possible. Uh, we are going to collect all the data and by July 20th, uh, 11 p.m., we'll finalize the data and we will analyze it and bring it all together and apply it to our process of building the rest of our regathering plan. I look forward to the time that we can gather together again. Until then, have a blessed, blessed week. Uh, join us next week as we conclude our sermon series, What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do. Take care. Bless you all. Take care.